We would now like to invite our beloved Rabbi Alush to come up and share a few thoughts with our graduates. I'm proud of you, friends. We stand tonight exactly two days before the festival of Shavuot, in which we are told to learn and learn and learn the Torah that was given on Mount Sinai 3,335 years ago. Indeed, learning is what you're all about and what you will continue to do in the next four, eight, 12 years, and many, many more. The word for learning in Hebrew, as many of you know, is Lamed. And graduates, tonight, I want to share with you the acronym that Lamed is. Because as our sages teach, Lamed really stands for three additional Hebrew words. Lamed stands for Lev, which means heart. Mem stands for Ma'aseh, which means action. Dalet stands for Dibur, which means to speak. So let's delve just in the next three minutes into the essence of each of those three words. Heart. I'm reminded of the story I myself experienced in 2016 when I took my community to a trip in Israel and we walked into a restaurant and there we saw a disfigured man. I immediately recognized him and I asked him, aren't you Aharon Karov, the heroic soldier? He said, yes, I am. I said, can you please come and share your story with my group? He said, sure. He shared his story in 2008, just a few weeks after his own wedding. He was called to join his brothers and sisters in the Gaza war. Unfortunately, he walked into a booby-trapped home that exploded as soon as he entered. He was pronounced dead on the scene, yet his friends refused to give up on him. They shipped him to a local hospital. There he was revived. The doctor said, you'll never be able to walk. Today he walks. They said, you'll never be able to run. Today he runs marathons. They said, you'll never be able to have children. Today, he has two beautiful daughters. When Aaron was speaking with us, he all of a sudden stops and says, look, I know it's hard to look at me. Nothing that you see here is mine. My cheeks are not my cheeks. My forehead is not my forehead. My nose is not my nose. Everything here was reconstructed. Nothing is mine. But there is one thing they'll never be able to touch. And he pointed to his heart. He said, you see, this will remain intact, full of love, kindness, passion, and dedication to my nation forever and ever. And this is lesson number one, friends, and especially our beloved students. Ensure that your heart, regardless of the challenges of life, remains intact, full of love, kindness, passion, and dedication to your sole purpose, to our nation, and to our world. Word number two, Dibur, speech. I know we live in a social media age where we think that every post is worth posting or reposting. Every tweet is worth retweeting. Every Snapchat or text is worth responding to. It's very easy to say things very quickly, but it's very hard sometimes to control those things that we want to say and should not be said. I learned this from a Holocaust survivor. Holocaust survivor who was rushed into a cattle car on her way to Auschwitz with a little brother. Her parents had disappeared. She was there alone in the cattle car and she points to her brother's feet. And she said to her brother, how dare, how dare you forget your shoes? Don't you know that it is cold out there? Don't you know that we may be gone forever? All of a sudden, her brother was no more. They took him from the cattle car and she never saw him again. She realized that those were the last words she said to her brother. And on that day, on the way to Auschwitz, she made a vow never to say anything that cannot stand as the last words I say. Never to say anything that cannot stand as the last words I say is the advice I give to you as we speak of the second notion of Dibur. And number three, finally, Ma'aseh. Judaism teaches us that more than we are what we think, more than when we are what we eat, more than we are what we say, we are what we do. It is our actions that make us and define us. I'm reminded of this message by another Holocaust survivor that I had the privilege of meeting in Miami Beach, Florida. He's 98 years old, and thank God he's still very lucid, very active, and he's a drummer in a band called the Holocaust Survivor Band. When I asked him, how did this band begin? He replied very simply, it began in Auschwitz. I said, really? He said, yes, we were robbed of everything. And there are two things that I love in life, food 
and music. Food I didn't have. So I decided to dedicate myself to music, but I had no instruments. So I took two spoons and I decided to start drumming and sing to myself the Hava Nagila. This was the first performance of the Holocaust Survivor Band. And ever since, I've been singing and drumming, singing and drumming, regardless of the circumstances around me. Indeed, Saul Dreyer he knew that it is his actions that will define him and maybe the Jewish world altogether. And so as we conclude this graduation ceremony, I tell you, my beloved students, number one, make sure that your heart is always full of love, full of goodness. Number two, make sure that you watch what you say. In the words of a great Hasidic master, not every thought is worth saying, not every saying is worth writing, not every writing is worth reading, and not every reading is worth publishing. And number three, make sure that you grab all of the beautiful spoons that your parents, your grandparents, your teachers, the administrative staff, everyone that loves you have given you throughout your life. Grab those spoons, grab those tools, and create for yourselves and for the world around us the most beautiful music that we have ever heard. Mazel tov, mazel tov.